Hello everyone. My name is Carmen Delutri and I'm an attorney at the Delutri Law Group. I want to thank you for joining me for this short series of videos for the Delutri Law Group University. The first thing I want to talk to you about today is Chapter 7 Bankruptcy and Social Security. In Southwest Florida, we have an aging population, so the question of Social Security and bankruptcy comes up quite often. It actually comes up in two contexts in Chapter 7. First is the means test. Now, if you don't know anything about the means test, I would highly advise you to look at some of our other videos on the means test to get a clear understanding of what it is. It's probably one of the most misunderstood concepts in bankruptcy. But the good news is Congress actually got this right. They took Social Security out of the means test budget. So when you're looking at income for the means test, Social Security is specifically excluded. So let's say, for example, the husband's on Social Security and the wife is working and she makes about $300 a week. The husband's Social Security is about $1,200 a month and the wife's gross income is about $1,200 a month. So normally you would think the total household income would be $2,400. Actually, under the means test, once we exclude the Social Security, now we're only looking at total household income of $1,200 which is going to put that family of two far below means test values when, it, when you're looking at really whether or not there's an abuse or a presumption of abuse under the means test, which is perfect. That's right where I want my clients to be. So if I see a couple come in and either one or both has Social Security, then I'm not really worried about the means test. I, I tell them some, the means test is something you want to know about, but actually you're going to pass the means test unless you have a significant amount of other income which is not Social Security related. Then we look at the second part of the analysis, which is Schedule I and Schedule J. That's your actual income and expenses in your bankruptcy paperwork. Now, we have to put Social Security income on Schedule I, but we really don't look at it too hard because we know that pursuant to federal law, Social Security cannot be taken from you to pay your creditor's claims. So it's kind of a weird interplay between Social Security and bankruptcy. The good news is, is that under the means test, you don't really, it doesn't really affect you and you don't have to worry about it. And under Schedule I and J, we list it, and I've got about seven reasons why you have to list it, but the bottom line is it doesn't really matter if you have an extra $100 or $200 left over in your budget because it is Social Security income and that income cannot be taken from you to pay your creditors' claims. Thank you for watching. If you would like more information on this topic or any others, please feel free to contact us for a free 30-minute consultation.